Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a putrid Blight King. If you like the content and you enjoy the channel and you'd like to support us, our Coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now, onto the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel and Fist on Red. I'm going to use this to do all of the open wounds. Now on this particular guy, he has a huge open wound, like a mouth in his stomach there. You can see that's quite a bit of detail in there as well, where that tongue goes into. So if you can reach inside an old brush and get some a fist on red in there first. Now we're going to shade that bit first so that we can carry on painting it without worrying about having to go back and then painting the inside once everything else is painted. Just get all those wounds covered with my fist on red and we can move on to the next colour. So to say we're going to shade the inside of that mouth with Citadel Drucci Violet. And that will be nicely shaded and ready to move on to the next ones. Next up we're going to start with Kislev Flesh. I'm just going to give his entire body a coat of that. So all of the skin, give a coat of Kislev Flesh. Quite a normal skin tone for it but we are going to give it a green wash and then we're going to start highlighting it and colouring it with a bit of Deepkin Flesh as well to build up those layers and make it look a little bit sickly and a bit pallid maybe. It won't look healthy at the end of it, that's the main one. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this for the strap on his shoulder pad there. I'm also going to use it for the top of his boots, his belt and his pouch. So you're not too sure he has a belt. Might just be his pouch and the tops of his boots. And these little leather bits on the handle of his axe. Now going on to Citadel Pink Horror. You can use this to paint the big tongue that's coming out of his stomach and also the weird dangly tentacle that's coming out of his ear. Now for some Elysian Green, I'm use this to do the main part of his helmet, not that big blade. Both kneecaps, the shoulder pad, and he's got an elbow and wrist guard on his right arm. So we're going to be doing that with this Elysian Green too, to give him that kind of Nurgle colour for his armour. Also going to do the front and back loincloths with this too. That's going to be some Citadel Lead Belcher. Use this to do the blades on his weapon and his axe. Also his chain mail. And the blade on the front of his helm. Next colour is going to be Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to do the big bony spine that's sticking out of his shoulder. Also use it on each of the teeth, which is growing in the mouth in his stomach. Use that as a nice base coat for the teeth. Next up, I'm going to use some Citadel Rhinoxide. I'm going to use this to do the base of the boots. Like the lower part of the boots, I should say.
I'm going to use some Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to use this to do the handle of his axe. It's got a nice dark wood colour. Like so. Next up, we're going to use some Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to use this to paint the little severed head, which the tongue is wrapping around. Once you've got a nice colour on that, we can move on to the next one. Now we're going to be using Citadel Zerius Purple. I'm going to use this to do the tentacles, which are sort of growing out the almost the bottom lip of that weird mouth that's growing in his stomach. Now it used to be that I would start blending the purple into the skin tone by mixing a bit of each and slowly getting it darker and lighter each way. But on this guy I just used some Drucci Violet and kind of blended that in quite nicely without hardly any effort, so I'm quite pleased with that. I'll see that a bit later on. So now we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Rust, and this is just to do the bronze bits on it, so you've got the three discs of Nurgle there, and then at the end of the sword you've also got a skull for the pommel, so you want to give that a coat of it too. Once you've got the model there rust done, we're going to move on to Citadel Dawn Yellow. There you go. I'm just going to paint all of the kind of boils or the pox or whatever they are that's growing on them. I like to do this now because it makes them stand out a bit and then once you've finished painting it you can see exactly where you're putting the Dawn Yellow at the end there. So we just go around and get all these boils and pox painted up with this and it makes it a lot easier later on. Now it's Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. I'm going to use this to do the armor plate. It's the first of the layers that really brings out the detail, so you can see exactly what's going on on a miniature. It's quite cool. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Snake Bite Leather. We're going to be using this on the tops of the boots where it's folded over. You've got the coin purse or the pouch or whatever it is on his hip. You also have the wraps on the handle of the axe. I think that might be about it. Any of the bits that you painted with Bane Blade Brown, you want to paint with this. Now we're going to go for a little bit of Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this on all of the lead belcher on the miniature. And we're also going to use it on the handle of the axe too. Really are stunning models, these Light Kings. The amount of detail that each one's got on them and the amount of different parts that you get in each box. They are very, very versatile figures. Next up, Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm going to use this to do his skin. As well as I usually slap the shade onto most areas to shade them. With this I'm just going to do a really really light coat and go over to this colour of the skin and give it that kind of blue hue. You don't want it too dark because when you start putting the flesh colour back on again the recesses will be very very dark because it's obviously a very very dark colour. 
So if you just kind of apply it very, very thinly, that'll discolour the skin without any worry of it leaving too dark a recess. Next it's Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this to do the pommel. I was going to use it to do the symbols of Nurgle on each side of the sword. I also use this Agrax Earthshade just to discolour the blades of the axe, the chainmail, the blade of the sword, and that big blade sticking out the front of his face too. Now it's going to be a Thonian camo shade once more. I'm just going to paint this severed head at the bottom of the tongue. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this to paint the bone which is growing out the top of his shoulder. Also each of the teeth around the mouth. Make sure they've all got a nice coat of that. I was going to use it on the cloth because that means that when we come to paint up the cloth, it'll have that different shade within the recesses compared to the armour so they won't blend in too much together. And now we're going to use a little bit of Carabao Crimson and do the tongue. That gives the tongue a nice deep red colour. Now there are a few little bits where it looks like poxmark or boils have burst on the tongue and there's little recesses where it's got like little cuts on it and things like that. So there's plenty of detail on my tongue. So say the miniatures for the Blight Kings really, really are good kits. So many different options. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Druchi Violet. I'm going to start putting this over the open wounds all around the body. We're also going to do this on the tentacles of Zerius Purple. Now two of these open wounds on the chest there I changed into eyes a little bit later on because I just kept seeing the face on the stomach. But at the time being, the eyes are open wounds. Kids love flesh. Next on the agenda we're going to start repainting the skin. Can you hear any creaking in the background? That's just my chair. So we're going to start reapplying this, and then as we start to highlight it, it'll look more and more sickly. Now we'll give it that nice kind of blue-grey skin tone. Next up we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to mix that with the Citadel Kislev Flesh and make a slightly lighter shade of that and then we're just going to start highlighting the skin. So as always you want to think about where the light's coming from and highlight only the parts where the light will be catching it. I'm going to have a change in the camera there because it's washing out the detail. It's slightly darker but you can see what's going on a lot better. Next up, we're going to add a little bit more Deepkin Flesh to the previous mix. We're going to add another highlight to this. So each time that you highlight, you want to begin lighter and lighter on a smaller, smaller area. So if you do like two thirds on the first highlight and then kind of like one third on the second highlight and just get those sections smaller and smaller, smaller that you're highlighting, then you'll get that nice kind of light highlights coming together on it. Now adding a bit more Deepkin Flesh to the previous mix, I'm going to highlight that once more. Once you've got this layer done, this will be the skin done. 
you can move on to the bone sections. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to paint the teeth in that stomach mouth and also the bone spike which is grown out of his shoulder. When you're doing this you want to leave some of the Seraphim Sepia visible in the recesses on the teeth. The teeth have got like these little ridges and grooves on them. So you want to leave the grooves filled with the sepia and then towards the base of the tooth as well so it's a bit darker and browner where it joins onto the gum. You want to do the same kind of effect on the spike on the shoulder too. That just makes it look lighter towards the end and gives that kind of bonish look. So now I'm going to mix some Citadel Ushabti bone in with the Rakath flesh and we're just going to do a highlight on the teeth and the bony spine too. doing the spine here when you're applying this you want to leave some of the previous layer visible so you don't want to be doing this all the way down to the bottom or covering all of that Rakhar flesh you want to be doing see about maybe two-thirds of it leaving some of that Rakhar flesh visible now we're just going to use a little bit of pure Ushabti bone and again this is going to be on about two-thirds of the previous layer I'm going to try and be capturing the highlights on those ridges maybe make the highlights on the ridges go a bit further than the highlight on flat surfaces would go. It just makes those ridges stand out that little bit more. Gives quite a good effect, I think. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to Ushabti Bone. I'm just going to do one final highlight right on the tip of each of these sections. Just going down a little bit further with those ridges just to make them stand out a little bit. Now I'm going to start working on the armour. I'm going to start with Citadel Elysian Green and start working on that colour. And when you're re-adding this to the armour plates, you want to leave the recesses and the dimples and the underside of all the armour plates and leave the sepia shade on those. You don't want to go all the way round. That gives the initial shade on the underside that look of darkness as though it's not catching any light. If you do that to each of the pieces, it does make it look quite good. Now I'll add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Elysian Green. I'm just going to start highlighting underneath all the ridges and that kind of thing. Also the tops of the armour where the light would be catching it. Just kind of feathering that down a little bit, the edge there. do this on the sort of top maybe two thirds of the armour pieces you can see there where we've gone down to now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix we're just going to do a little bit more highlighting mainly on the edges so underneath each of the ridges down the front of each of the ridges where it'd be catching the light that just makes all those details stand out that little bit more so that you can notice them a lot easier Now we're going for Citadel Balor Brown, and now we're going to be highlighting all the lighter coloured leather parts, so the top of the boots, the strap going around his chest, the straps that go around the handle, and the money pouch, whatever's in his pouch, who knows, pretty sure we wouldn't be paying for anything like but. So 
we're going to leave the bronze there because that highlights it quite nicely. We're now going to move on to Citadel Gene Steeler Purple and start highlighting these tentacles that are growing out the bottom of the stomach mouth. Now I would usually do a Zarius Purple layer here, but to be honest, often when you put the Zarius Purple on, you can't really see the difference after you've shaded it anyway, so I thought I'd just leave it as the Gene Steeler Purple instead. Now we're going to be working on Citadel Pink Horror. I'm going to be using this to highlight the tentacles. I'll start working on the tongue and getting the colours back on there. There's plenty of ridges and little nicks in this tongue, which is cool. So if you make sure you try and keep as many details as possible on there, you can get it looking quite textured and quite revolting. So next we're going to go on to Citadel Emperor's Children. I'm going to start working on the tongue a little bit more and highlighting this as you always would with the highlights going on the areas that will be catching more light. And with these nicks and stuff like that, I'm sure you've bitten your tongue before. You end up with like a little ulcer or something like that on the side of it. There's a couple of little nicks on here, which I'm presuming through where uh, the tongue's been thrashing around and caught against those massive pointy teeth in its mouth. So I'm going to be painting up a few of them with a bit of Nurgle's rot leaking out of it, so it looks quite horrible. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to the Emperor's Children. And then we're just going to do one final highlight on some of the little details and around the bottom of all the little nicks and cuts and dents in it, just to make those stand out a little bit more. One thing I will be doing with this is painting the tongue and the inside of the mouth with Citadel Gloss Varnish, the hard coat. That'll just give it that shine to make it look as though it's still wet. So tongue finished, we're now going to work on that severed head on the bottom there. We're just going to reapply some deepkin flesh to that. Now the colour's a little bit washed out here. But as long as you're leaving the shade in the recesses, you can't go wrong with that. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of detail on one side of this face, the side that it's painting on now. The other side seems to have a lot, but this side not so much. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to that deepkin flesh, and we're just going to highlight that face. Make sure you pick out the prominent areas that be catching more light. The cheekbones and the nose, the top lip, the chin, a bit of the scalp there. Next up, some Citadel Dryad Bark. going to use this to paint up the threads and the cords that are crisscrossing the eyes and mouth of this fellow. Very quick layer here. And then we're going to add a little bit of white to the previous dryad bark, lighten that up a bit and then we're just going to do a highlight on there. Like so. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. I'm just going to put a little bit more of that into the cheek to bring out some of the details around the temple and where the sunken cheek is there and just underneath the jawline. Just because there doesn't seem to be too much detail on that specific part, so I thought put a little bit more shade there. can make the details stand out that little bit more, give it a bit more definition so you can see the shades and the highlights. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Dryad Bark and a piece of the Blister Pack Sponge. I'm doing a little bit of a paint chipping to the armour, because the armour is looking a little bit too clean there. So I'll link up a video on what I'm doing with the armour here. It's just an easy way to get your armour looking a bit more chipped and scuffed than it otherwise does. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Elysian Green, mixed with a little bit of Vallejo White to give it quite a nice light colour. And all you're doing is you're going around all the undersides where you just put the chips. So 
if you've got any little chips in the paint where you put the brown you want to be painting the underside of those areas so if there's little nicks or scratches or dots just go along the underside of that you want to see a bigger example of this i'll link up one that i did with paint chipping on a rhino which is the same effect as this but on a bigger scale but it explains it there too so you can see exactly what i'm doing a bit better now we're going to be using some citadel lead belcher you're just going to be using some of this in the bigger areas where you have just added the dryad bark so if you've got an open area of dryad bark just put a little bit of lead belcher in there and it makes it look like the paint is scuffed it's corroded or weathered in some way to go brown there is just like little nicks and scratches of the bare metal showing through beneath that now i'm going to use some citadel dawn yellow i'm going to use this to go over each and every one of those pustules and boils just to make them nice and bright you'll have had some of the flesh color go on them some of the shade from the skin as well so if you re-go over all these and just put all the little boils back on there I'll get them looking quite frightful. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia Shade. You're going to use this on all the areas that want to make look a little bit rotted on the blade. So adding this to kind of around all those chips and scuffs and the corroded areas where the blade's looking particularly knackered. This just gives it that base kind of light orangey yellowy kind of colour where things have started to corrode and go a bit rusty. That's what we're going to be working on now is making these blades and stuff look as if they have rotted away. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to put these roughly in the same areas, but leaving some of that Seraphim Sepia showing through too. This will give it that slightly darker shade from where we're going to add the Typhus Corrosion, so it's kind of building up to the darker areas. I also use a little bit of this on the areas where you put the lead belcher on that paint chipping. If you want to darken that down a bit, use a little bit of a Grax Earth shade on that. That will kind of still leave you with some of the lead belches showing through, but also give you that brown that blends it in with the dryad bark around it. So now we're just going to use some Vallejo Red Wash, which is a great colour for doing around the boils because it's not as dark and vivid as the Caroberg Crimson, and it just makes that flesh look a little bit raw and tender around where all the open wounds and stuff are. Also using this to go around the gums, where the teeth are coming out of on that mouth. That just makes them look a little bit red and inflamed too. Next, it's going to be a little bit of Citadel Nihilac Oxide. I'm just going to add a few little spots of this to the very few areas where we've used the Vallejo Model Air Rust. So just on the bits below and above, the grip of the sword. Now we're going to use some Citadel Technical Paint, Typhus Corrosion. This just to add a little bit of texture to the areas where we've been putting on those rust colours. So you want to add this to various areas of the blades where you want that texture to be, where you're going to highlight that and bring out the orange on it. So this will mainly be on the sword, the blade from his head and on the axe blade too. You can also put some on those little spikes that are around the handle of the axe. Like so. Before the next layer, which is going to be Citadel Riser Rust, you want to make sure that the Typhus Corrosion is completely dry, because if you start painting the Riser Rust on when it's a bit wet, it'll just mix with it and make the whole thing go a kind of light orangey brown rather than actually highlighting the texture. So do make sure that that typhus corrosion is dry first. Again, just using an old brush to lightly dry brush that riser rust onto the textured part. You always want to make sure that when you put the riser rust on a brush, you're using a piece of paper to wipe the most of it off. And you can then lightly dry brush that over. Better to do a couple of layers with the dry brush 
than one thick one. Okay, so here I'm just pointing to two little openings there, which every time I looked at the mouth and there's two little holes above it, made it look like a face. So I'm painting these two wounds as eyes. So I'm using a bit of Vallejo white just to fill in these areas to make them look like eyes. Sounds ridiculous, looks dead cool. So I'm going to use a little bit of black just to put the spots in those eyes. Like so. And now that we've done that, we're just going to fix those and make it look a little bit better. Like so. And then we're just going to use a little bit of white to put a little spot of reflection in the top right of each of those big pupils, like so. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange. Use this just on the areas that we painted the rust. And this is just to give it that deeper orange colour of the rust, which adds to what you've already painted onto there. Like so. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Carobird Crimson. I'm going to use this to go around the eyes, but also to paint inside those little wounds on it and do little runs of blood, trickles of blood from those wounds all over the body. So you leave these things to the last because the blood is going to be the stuff that's going to be running over everything. So you want to have the blood trickling over, say, the armour and things like that, which is why I always do the gore and the horrible bits towards the end. I'm going to use some Citadel Gloss Varnish. Now at this point I have actually sprayed him with Halford's Matte Lacquer to protect the model. We're just using the Gloss Varnish on the tongue and the eyes and the open wounds too. The reason to do this is because you spray it with, if you put the gloss on first and then spray it with the matte varnish, it just mattifies the glossy areas so they just become matte as well. So if you spray it with the matte varnish and then use the gloss just to go over the areas that you want shiny, and that brings them out and makes them look a bit moist and sickly. I'm going to use some tiny spots of Nurgle's Rot, and all I want to do with this is the little open wounds on the tongue. Like I was saying before about having an ulcer where you've caught it on your tooth or what have you. If you just fill in these little bits, not with too much, just enough to make it visible. So that you can see the Nurgle's Rot in there, so it looks like it's got a bit of a manky wound. And you can also do little streaks of Nurgle's Rot running from the mouth and running lengthways down the tongue. That just makes it look that little bit more revolting. And finally, a little bit of Sithel Blood for the Blood God. We're just going to be adding this to a few of the bigger wounds just to make them look a bit damp and a bit nasty. A little bit under his arm there where you'd have the two wounds on the underside of his arm. If you put his arm to his side, it'd be leaking blood all over the inside of his arm, smearing about, so I've added some of that to it. You also want to think about on the cloth that he's got over his bum there. He's going to have plenty of blood running from the wounds on his back down onto that cloth and making that quite horrific. And that is the finished Blight King. I'm really happy with how he turned out. It's a cracking miniature, absolutely hideous. But I really do like how he turned out. Now if you want to see how I've been working on the base on that and want a video of that, just sing out in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content, and you'd like to support us, our Patreon and Coffee pages are linked below. Thanks very much.